change change I'll pray oh may we be blessed as we listen in Jesus name
Can somebody tell their neighbor, I'll never be the same? He has changed me. Can you say it confidently? I'll never be the same. He has changed me. Praise God. So, before we go into the message this morning, I want to specially take this opportunity to thank Daddy and Mom Milawa. Thank you so much for this, the learning, the training, the grooming, the opportunity to observe and learn so much over this last almost four years now. It has been a blessing for me. Can we just celebrate God in their lives? Please help me celebrate them sincerely. I'm not saying it as just greeting. I mean it genuinely. So please, let's appreciate them. Also, I want to thank the pastoral team, Pastor Demola, Pastor Mrs. Adibu in Teenagers Church, my Teenagers Church family members, <laughs> celebrating all of you. I'm seeing all of you as you're smiling back at me. Thank you so much for all the time that, you know, of encouragement, of sharing God's word together. I pray that the Lord will continue to strengthen his church in Jesus' name. I want to thank the entire church too as well. It has been a blessing seven years over this time. Lastly, I'll thank my advisor. And it's more than just school advice. He has been a father in many ways. Dr. Okore, please can we celebrate God in his life from the Nigerian Baptist Theological Seminary. Amen. So it is a blessing to learn. It's a blessing to train. It's a blessing to, to grow as a, as a servant of God and as a child of God. And so if God is calling you in any way or the other and you have been running, maybe, you know, today is another day of saying, ah, actually, God is speaking to me. And I pray that indeed he will speak to us this morning in Jesus' name. So let's open our Bibles, 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings 18. We'll read just five verses and then do a little bit of explanation and we can close. 1 Kings chapter 18. We'll read from verse 16 to 21. 1 Kings 18, 16 to 21. Just a minute, please. So I read. It says, So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him. And Ahab went to meet Elijah. When he saw Elijah, he said to him, Is that you, you troubler of Israel? Verse 18 says, I have not made trouble for Israel, Elijah replied. Now summon the people from all over Israel to meet me on Mount Carmel and bring the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent word throughout all Israel and assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. Verse 21, Elijah went before the people and said, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. Let me read it again. It says, Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. Amen. Amen. So, before we pray, I just want to show us that, a little bit of a picture, that we are joining this story in the middle. Someone that does not probably, is not very conversant with where we are reading, but you'll be wondering that, Kilon Shelegogon, it's like, you know when you join a film, in the middle of the film, and you're like, I like what I'm seeing, but I don't really understand what has been going on. It's like you are joining the season, and you are watching maybe season two, episode 12, and you're asking, Tati, any wood are going in the season? Tani, can you continue? You're just asking, because you don't know what is going on. So, you are laughing. So you are wondering that what's really happening in this film. And so I want to just show you a little bit what is going on in this passage before we pray. 
You see, here, yeah, at this point, the Israelites had been in famine for the last three years. There had been no food in the country. If you read the previous chapter, there was one woman there that was getting ready to go and, you know, eat her last food and just die. She was on her last card. She, everything was dry in the country. Things were very bad. Does that remind you of any country? Does it remind you of any country? Things were very bad. Aside from that, there was so much wickedness going on in that land. So much wickedness. The Bible said that, if we go to the previous verses, anybody that was able to speak the truth, the Bible said, Jezebel was killing the prophets one by one, one by one. That means, if you dare say you want to stand for the truth, they will deal with you. Does that sound like any country? Does that sound like any country? I'm just showing you why it is important that we follow this story that we are looking at this morning. Aside from that, we also see there that, you know, they said all the prophets had been killed, everything had been... There was famine in the land, yet... The Bible said in the verse that we read, one of the previous verses, it said, Jezebel and these prophets were feasting at her table every day. Meaning that in any country. So it shows that what we are about to look at in this passage is not something that only applies to, oh, this is only Israel, this is only that time. It's something that applies to even our lives here today. And Elijah called them to a particular place, and he asked just a single question, and that's the topic for today's sermon. That's the message, that's everything. He called them and he said, gather these people. Enough of all this suffering, enough of all this agony. Let's have a moment of decision. And he called them. He called them to Mount Camel. And what he told them to do, his message to them is the same message that I will be giving to us today by God's grace. He was telling them, choose a side. What did he tell them? Choose a side. Can you tell your neighbor, choose a side? So you don't mind me, I'm from Tinja, so we like to, we used to talk, don't, we do like this many times, I assure you. So can you tell your neighbor again, choose a side. Choose a side. So can we bow our heads to pray this morning? Our Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of your word. Thank you for everything that you have put in this word, not just for the benefit of storytelling or preaching, but so that our lives will be transformed. We ask, oh God, as we read your word, as we hear from you this morning, it will not just be me speaking, you will speak to every heart in Jesus' name. Please keep our attention here, keep our minds on you, and let us hear from you in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. So as we go into the message, you know when there's a story going on, there's a cast, Abby? If you are in drama, if, you are, if there's a story, there's a film, there's a thing, there's always what's a cast. So before I go into the three points, because there are just three points that I want to share this morning, I want to show you who are the cast of the people? Let me that we are watching this morning. Can somebody just call us? Who are the cast? Can somebody mention one person that is in this drama we have been reading? You read the passage, now? Eh? Elijah, Elijah, okay. Can we mention another person? Ahab, okay. I think there's like one or two more group of people. There's another group of people. The Israelites, and then there's one more group. The prophets of Baal. Thank you very much. Please, let's start for... Yeah, sorry. <laughs> So, four group of people, and let me just talk about them very quickly for those that may not be familiar with them, because I don't want to assume that everybody knows these people. Ahab was a very terrible man. The Bible said, if we read from um, 1 Kings, let me just read from my Bible, 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 30, it said, Ahab did more evil in the eyes of the Lord than any of those before him. It means that Israel has been having bad kings, but even God recognized that his own wickedness was wickedness pro. It was, it was terrible. That everybody has been bad, everybody has been wicked, but this one, God recognizes that his own wickedness is, is more than the others. The Bible said that he did not think it, he thought it too small, too normal, 1 Kings 16.30, too normal for him to do the same evil that others behind him have been doing. He added new levels of evil. That's the man we are talking about here. The Bible said he married Jezebel and then he brought the bows, he brought the, the evil, you know, gods, brought them into Israel, built a temple for them in, the, in Samaria. So this was a very terrible man. So when you are hearing Ahab, don't think that, oh, he was just one, you know, gentle, this thing. He was a terrible person. On the other side, we have the prophets of Baal. Those ones, the way I see them in the story, they are just people that are sitting down, enjoying themselves, having fun. You know, after they finish doing all their temple responsibility, they will go and enjoy flexing life. Let's gather a table again. Let's do banquets. Let's have fun. That's what they were just doing. They were just deceiving everybody and enjoying themselves. And, you know, even though things we had, they were having fun. Then there was Elijah. 
The Bible said that Elijah just came out of nowhere and said one day that there will be no rain in Israel for the next how many years until I say so. That's a man of faith. He was a man of courage. The Bible said that he was standing alone. And you might be wondering, why was he standing alone? Jezebel had killed all the prophets of Baal, every, of, of, um, sorry, of God. Every, almost every one of them, except for a few. So Elijah was a man that was standing alone. He was a man that was bold to stand by himself. Are we together? Are we together? So he was a man that was bold to stand by himself. He was, in, he was, he was courageous. He could stand and say, I am standing for God, even though there's nobody else that is standing with me. And maybe that's something for us to learn today, that you can stand for God even when there's nobody else standing with you. So Elijah was that kind of man. He was bold. God had been taking care of him. He had been cared for by God. And then the last group of people, and this is the people I want to spend a little time talking about, the Israelites. If you know the Israelites, you will know that these people are stubborn people. Right? Very stubborn people. God called them. God chose them. God sets them apart from Egypt. He said, you are my people. You are my own special people. You are the people I want. You are the people I love. You are everything. He was just, you know, God did not say they are everything. But he was just saying all of these wonderful things to them. And then what did Israel do? From the moment that God sent them out of Egypt and brought them out, from almost the immediate moment, they started worshiping other gods. They did not use how many... How long in the winter? They already said, ah, let us build uh, something that will be worshipping Jerry. This God that brought us out of here, what's the power to be you? They've not used weeks. They've not even used that long at all. They were already doing that. And throughout Israel's life, if we had time, I will show you. We'll be looking at it one by one as how, you know, they kept on turning their back against God over and over and over again. God called Israel to be a separate country. But if you see them, their life does not look different from the people that they even, you know, brought them out of. They and the people that God chased out, same thing. Israelites are even probably worse. Are we together? And so somebody might be looking, because before we go into the, the message of Elijah this morning, someone might be thinking that, ah, these Israelites sound a little bit like me. You know, I know that God loves me. I know that God cares for me. But me too, I know I'm stubborn. Well, we'll see the word of God for us today. So at this point, we can see all the people that are there. And then God, Elijah came there and said, call all the people. Call all the prophets. Everybody, let us gather together at this point. And he asked them a question. And that question is where we'll get the three lessons that we'll hold on to this morning. Can we read verse 21 of our passage again? 1 Kings 18, 21. Can we read it again, please? He said, Elijah went... Okay, can we read this from up? And Elijah came unto the people and said, How long ought he between what? Two opinions. If the Lord be God, do what? Follow him. But if Baal... Then do what? Follow him. And the people answered him not a, a word. So the first point this morning that we'll see from there is, and I want you to tell your neighbor as well, you can note it down, but tell your neighbor, is you have a choice. Can you tell your neighbor you have a choice? Everybody in this life has choice. Everybody in this life has choice. There are times and situations that you almost think that, ah, me, only choice, no worry. But God gave man the gift of what? Of choice. When he created us in the garden, he did not say, eh, there's no fruit of this thing. He gave them options. He said, there's a fruit here, but don't do what? Don't eat it. But did he force them? It was their choice. Even the Israelites in this passage, it was clear that they had no choice. Nobody, Elijah did not come and meet them and say, God is God, though, you must follow him. Is that what he said? He said, it's up to you. But you have to decide. If God is God, do what? Worship him. If Baal is God, do what? Worship him. But the choice is what? Whose? Is yours. The choice belongs to you. God does not force anyone. God does not impose decision on anyone. God does not say, oh, eh, you must do exactly as I've said. You must. He commands you. He, 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 he's giving his own command. But to obey is up to who? It's up to you. And many people in the Bible have disobeyed God. Jonah, when God would send him, he said, go to where? Nineveh. And what did Jonah do? He said, Eshegon, you have said the answer. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful. He carried his bag and did what? Went in the opposite direction. He had his choice. Of course, God dealt with him, but he had what? He had his choice. God gives us choice. If you look at the message translation of that verse that we read, that's first thing. He said, Elijah told him, make up your mind. Make up your mind. It means that you have a decision to do what? To make. And I was thinking about it this funny way. If you go to party 
And you, of course, everybody's ready to eat item seven. And then they bring jollof right before you. The server brings jollof and said, make up your mind. What will you say? About what? Abi? Make up my mind. I eat big jollof rice. Wa. She, you must bring me very gen. But if the server comes to and says, we have amala, we have semo, we have pandediam, we have what else again? We have rice. We have what else again? We have ofada. Make up your mind. Right? There's a difference. So, some people are already thinking about food. Please come back to church. We have a decision to make. Everybody does what? Everybody has a choice. Can you tell your neighbor again, you have a, you have a choice. Don't let anything, you know, sometimes, if you have ever struggled with maybe an addiction or a temptation, you will almost think you have no choice. Abi, you almost feel like, me, you choice. I just have to do it. But even now, God is still reminding us that what you have what? You have a choice. Ah, but when you call my family, don't know. You wish I'm married. Sorry that I'm switching to you. I'm just trying to. He has said he will marry me compulsory. He has said he loves me. He has said like, I, will, I must do his own. You have a what? Maybe if you have a friend that is in that situation, tell her very well. You have a choice. You have a choice. Everybody has a choice. God gave us choice. Let's read from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Deuteronomy 13, 19. I just want to show you that in the Bible too, you know, there was choice. God gave everyone choice. Deuteronomy 13, 19 said, This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you, and I have set before you life and what? Death. Blessing and what? Causes. Therefore, do what? Choose life that both thou and thou seed may live. He gave them what? A choice. He did not say, you people have seen oh, that is life that is good. You have seen that is life that is good. You must choose. Mm -mm. He told them, there is life and there is what? Death. There is blessing and there is what? Choose. He advised them, choose life. It's a choice, but you can decide not to. Last example before we move to the next point. One day, Jesus called one man and said, the man said, I've been serving, I've been obeying all the instructions from when I'm young. This is, okay, Jesus said, okay, it remains one more thing. Sell all your property. Sell everything. And follow me. And the Bible said that the man went away sad. Did Jesus now say, John, Peter, I will leave you going? Did Jesus do that? Did Jesus do that? When he decided, what did Jesus do? He allowed him. Because everybody has a choice. So that's the first thing. Elijah was showing them you have a choice. Don't think that anybody is forcing you. You have a choice. And as I said earlier, when there is a choice, it means that there are what? There are options. Abi, you have options. Because you cannot have choice without options. So that's the second point. This one is a bit long, but you still tell your neighbor. You have only two options. Can you tell your neighbor? But it remains one more thing to say. And there is no middle ground. Can we say it together? You have only two options. And there's what? No middle ground. So Elijah, let's go back to that verse again. He told them again. It's that same verse we are going back to. He said, how long will you continue to go between two opinions? Not three, not four, not five. If God is God, do what? Follow him. If Baal is God, then do what? Follow him. He was saying, how long will you continue to waver? How long will you continue to do like this between two opinions? How long will you continue to dance around between two options? How long will you continue to think, you know, is it this one, is it that one, is it this choice, is it that choice? How long? But he made this clear to them that they had only what? Two choices. And I'll spend a little bit on time here, of time here. What are the choices in this passage that we read today? On one side, there is God. And as I was preparing, I was thinking, who is God? You know, we talked about the other characters. How do we want to describe God? How do I want to explain that, okay, this is who God is. This is God. How do I want to describe him? If I had opportunity, I would come and make sure you can describe him by yourself because, you know, there's one song that says, is what? Indescribable. Can we really describe God? You know, the God that all of creation came from him. The God that said, let there be light, and there was what? There was light. The God that makes a way in the wilderness. The God that, the Bible said, the 24 elders bow down before him. And, you know, the truth is, as I was thinking about it, and even now as I'm talking about it, I just felt this urge to worship God. That this God is mighty. This God is great. This God is glorious. Even, even us, as people, we cannot think about him completely. You know, 
is the God that we will sing and we'll come together and say, Heaven and earth are doing, angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. And another song I love very much, you know, says, I want a day, lo ye yoka. I want a day, lo ye yoka. I want a day, lo ye yoka. And some people will sing Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness, My God, that is who you are. Can somebody just let's take a minute, just worship God by yourself? Please just worship God. Tell God who is to you. Sorry. Just take this moment, one minute, we'll go back to the sermon, but just worship God. about God. There's so much. We cannot finish saying it. That's God. That's the God that the Israelites were trying to choose between. And on the other side, there's Baal. And I was thinking to myself, Baal, okay. like, see God. See how big he is. See how great he is. See how mighty he is. And then see, even the name go, Baal. Very you are not supposed to, this is not something you are supposed to be comparing. But you know it's a very difficult decision to make. And I know somebody will say, ah, I'm Israelite, you know, say, so say, well, is it that difficult? It's such an easy choice to make. But the Israelites refused to make that choice. They refused. They wanted to stay in the middle, you know? They wanted to just continue to balance. And I wish I could demonstrate it, you know? It's like, the, the, the picture that I was there, like, they were standing on one leg like this. Okay, today we are, we are doing God. Today we are doing God, we are doing God, we are doing God. We are doing God. <sighs> It's like, we'll do bad, we'll do bad, we'll do bad. And that's what they wanted to keep doing for the rest of their lives. And, and Elijah was telling them, how long? You look foolish. You look stupid. You are standing on one leg like this. Standing, are, are you dancing? Like they used to say, are you dancing or what? Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What's the point of what you are doing? And so they, 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 they just wanted to stay in the middle. And some of us, we love the middle a lot. We love the middle. See, me too. If you, today, there's much now. I am in the middle. I don't like, I stop supporting club because I don't want stress. You know, it's, the middle can be very sweet. Nobody will dislike you. Nobody will hate you in the middle. If they come and meet you and say, hey, hey, Terry, Falake fought me. Can you come fought me? I'll just say, ah, ah actually, uh, you know what Falake is saying to you is good. Uh, but what blessing to you is saying to you is also very, very good. If both of you have spoken very well, there's no problem. The middle is nice. The middle is sweet. I remember watching the, a movie, you know, when they finished fighting or the battle of the world, and then they now brought the matter. 
Then one pastor stood on one side. Then another priest of another religion stood on the other side. They now pointed. He pointed his own Bible. He pointed his own this thing. And they pointed it at the person. And then as they pointed it together, the person was how that. Ah. Just because we don't want to choose one side. So we want to show that both sides can do what? Can work. The middle is very, very sweet. The middle is nice. But we only have two options. And there is no middle ground. And if you think I'm forming this thing by myself, Jesus himself said it. Can we read from Matthew chapter 6 verse 24? Matthew 6, 24. Matthew 6, 24. It's up there. We can just read it together. What did he say? No man can do what? No man can serve two masters. For either we hate the one and love the... Or else if we hold on to one and do what? despise the other. You cannot serve God and Jesus himself said it again. There is no what? No middle ground. You cannot serve this person and say you still want to serve God again. There is no middle ground. And I know that it's difficult. See, you know, there is no word of God that you want to come and preach and you'll be saying, ah, it's because I'm an expert on this. I ask myself, is it not easy to be on the middle about many issues in this life? If I, am I the one that we have the mouth to not come and tell them that hey, this thing is a sin? Am I the one that is it only me? Have I even finished my own righteousness? That is me that will not be opening mouth to tell people that what you are doing is wrong. But even though the middle is sweet, you must do what? You must choose a, a side. You must choose a side. You must choose a side. And the Israelites throughout their lives, they never made that decision. You know, I thought that after everything that happened in this passage, you know, Elijah called down fire, they said God is God. I thought that that was the end of everything. Until I was studying again, I saw in 2 Kings 17. After I did Israel, like a very long time has passed. 2 Kings 17, if we have it, please. And the Bible said God had chased them out of the land. God chased them out because he was tired of their behavior. He could not cope with all these things that they are doing again. And in 2 Kings 17, verse 41. 2 Kings 17, 41. The Bible said that, okay, we don't have it. Let me read it from here. He said, so the Israelites were taken to their homeland in exile in Assyria, and they are still there. That's in verse 23. In verse 21, he said, even while these people were worshiping the Lord, they were doing what? Serving their idols. Okay, let's read it from here. So these countries, so these nations did what? Feared the Lord and served the graven images. So they did both. They were serving the Lord, and they were still doing what? serving the idols. They didn't choose. Even after everything that they had passed through, they continued not to choose a side. They continued not to choose a side. After everything, you know, even as Nigeria is suffering today, you would think that suffering is enough to teach people lessons. But I can assure you that as a country, we will still not choose a side. Do we want to be righteous people? Do we want to be holy people? We're just like Israel, very religious set of people. But we don't choose a side. We don't know whether we want to serve God or we want to serve ourselves. And so let's, let's take that point again. It says what? The, it's easy to serve money. Because, of course, everybody want, we want to survive. We want to live. But anything that wants to take the place of God is not, is, is, is already the ball. It's already the ball in your life, in our life, in my life. If it's not money, what else can it be? Enjoyment. Soft life. I just want to live my soft life. I just want to enjoy myself. Is that soft life getting in the way of serving God? Is it, is it getting in the way of following His instruction? There are only two options. See, if it's not God that you are serving, that we are giving all our energy to, it's something else. Is it enjoyment? Is it, is it power? I want to be popular. Move a trend, Lori Twitter. Move a trend, Lori TikTok. Is that what my life pursuit is? Is everything just about how do I become big? How do I become known? How does everybody know me? I don't think that because somebody is a pastor, it cannot happen to us. So. Somebody can say, ah, me too, I want to blow him. But I want to blow him in history. Let me blow. Let everybody be seen. It can happen to anybody. But you have just two options. It's either God or something else. Before we move to the next point, can you just tell your neighbor again? You have two options. And there's what? There's no middle ground. There's no middle ground. And this is the last question that you ask the person. This is the last point. How long will you wait? Choose a side. That's what Elijah told say. So now that we know all of these things, how long will you continue to wait? He's waiting. There's, there's something there. How long will you continue to wait? Can you tell them? How long will you continue to wait? 
Choose what? Say it like somebody that, that means it. Now, with my ad, how long will you continue to? Tell, tell them very loudly. Choose what? What? Worship him. Follow him. Serve him. And if bad is God, do what? Worship him. Follow him. Serve him. This year, our team is discipleship and what? Apostleship. And that's the point of this message. You know you want to be a disciple of Christ. If you know that Christ is God, if you know that he's the one that saved you, he's the one that delivered you, if you know that he's the, he's the Messiah, he's the everything that we And right, how long? And that's the question to us today. How long will you continue to say, I know that God's hand is on my life. I know that what they are doing in church. If, when I went to church today, God spoke to me. I know, I know. I believe in Jesus. But at the same time, I know that I want to follow my, my flesh. I want to do what I want to do what is in my mind to do. How long? And I was asking myself too, because this thing is not a once in a time choice, it's a daily choice. How long? I was asking, Gam, how long? How long do you want to continue to do? I'm serving God, then you know, not even I am, I'm not serving any idol, but serving yourself sometimes. How long? How long? You know, so we'll come to church, we we'll say, I know God's hand is on my life. Oh, wow, Lu Wambe, Loria, Yemio, Ongemi, Ongemi, Jekini, Ongemi, Sari. You know, in fact, since when you have been young, they've been calling you pastor. Your mom even told you that you be a Molala. As I, as I dreamt, I saw that person. He came out, the baby, eh, and he was preaching. He was preaching. I, yeah, this is my choice. I know you will be a pastor. And you too, you, that thing is inside you telling that you'll be a pastor, but uh, this enjoyment will not allow. I'm done. I'll come and be a. Tell that person, what are you waiting for? Choose a side. Choose a side. You know already. You know that God's hand is on your life. You know that He wants to use you. You know that He wants you to serve Him. Choose a side. Don't wait any longer. Choose a what? Choose a side. Let's read from 2 Kings, no, 1 Kings chapter 19. I want to show you an example of somebody. 1 Kings 19. We are rounding up already. 1 Kings 19. I'll read verse 19 to you, to us, and then. He said, So Elijah went from there and found Elisha. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the 12th pier. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Immediately, you know, that's what we are seeing there. It's not in the passage. Elijah left his oxen and ran after Elisha. Elijah, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye. And then I will do what? I would come with you. And we saw there that after that in verse 21, Elisha left him, went back, took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people. And immediately. They threw the cloth on him like this and said, he did not even say anything to him. He just threw the cloth on him. And the Bible said, Elisha said, let me just go and say bye-bye to them at home. And let me do what? Follow you. If Elijah, Elisha said, eh, so you know this business we are doing now, it's very nice, it's very lucrative, just give me like five months. When it was time for Elijah to go up into heaven, will any Elisha be there? But immediately he followed. See, that decision that you are delaying, you are delaying your destiny. That decision that you are saying, I don't want to make it. I don't want to choose yet. I know I want to serve God. I know I want to follow him. But let me wait more more. You are delaying destiny. Who knows what will have come out of your life earlier if you just answered now. Choose between me and this thing. You know what your own ball is. I know what my own is. And I've been praying. You know the choice you have to make. Some of serve him. I want to give my life to him. I want to use my life to, to, to move in after him. I want to be taking steps after him. I want to be a disciple of Jesus. Some of us, we come to church every Sunday. We come and we just, it's like those. You come on Sunday, you take the tablets, Sunday, Sunday. And then you do what? You go again till the next Sunday. We are just not choosing any side. We just want to stay in the middle. This relationship is not good for me. I know. And then choose a side now. If your boyfriend is God, follow him. If your girlfriend is God, follow her. But if God is God, do what? Follow him. Follow him.
Let's read Joshua chapter 24. That's the last passage we'll read. Joshua 24. I just want to show us that this thing is not a matter to be delayed. Joshua 24. Verse 15. Is it 15 now? Okay, yes. It says, but if serving the Lord, Joshua 24, if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, okay, let's read it from up. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, do what? Choose you this day whom you will do what? Choose you when? Choose you when? Ah, you people are not saying something. Ah, choose you when? This day. Choose today. It did not say choose you next week Sunday. It did not say choose you when you are 30. Whether it's the gods of your fathers, whether it's the gods on the other side of the flood, or the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But for me and my house, we will do what? We will serve the Lord. And that's what I want somebody to just live here with today. That today I'm deciding to be a disciple of Jesus. I'm deciding to follow Jesus. Somebody shared, shared a very funny story of giving his life to Christ and thinking that, oh, he was struggling with lust and he will not struggle with it again. So he gave his life to Christ. He made a decision. <laughs> and if I remember well, he said they had not left the church far. And of course, he saw a beautiful girl. <laughs> and he thought the thing inside him that we want to check out the girl will have died. And he still... Ah. But... You know, that's part of the journey of discipleship. Jesus is taking things away from you gradually. He's changing you. He's making your life. But you have to do what? Start first. First start. First decide to follow Jesus. Don't be afraid of all the things that will come next. First start. When you resume school, do you know everything that will happen throughout the four years in, in, or five years in LaTeX? Did you know? No. Do you know that uh, government, things will become like this, school fees will go up? Do you know anything? No. But you did what? You made a choice. Just make a decision. Don't be afraid. Don't say, eh, so what will not happen if I'm not tempted again tomorrow? It can happen. But just make a choice. Make a decision. And some people are here and you are thinking, I've been trying this thing. I've been trying. We are rounding up already. I'm closing. I've been trying this thing. I've been trying this thing. I've been trying. I know. See, it has happened to me. That you feel like I've made a decision. I'm struggling. I want to do well. Me, I want to do good. But I, I can't find this easy to do. Sometimes it's because you are doing it in your own power. The Bible said the arm of flesh will do what? It will fail you. It's not by determination alone. Yes, you have to make a decision, but it's not by determination alone. Nobody becomes a follower of Jesus by Momoshi. I know how to do it. I know how to do it. In Ezekiel 34, I think verse 15, he was saying that I will give you a new heart and a what? A new spirit. I will replace your heart of stone. So some of us, it's because we have not even come to Jesus at all. You have not even come to say, I release myself to you. I want to do this thing in your own power. It's not by determination. I want to pray every day and ask God for new strength. Are we together? Are we together? There's a decision to make. There's a side to choose. So I want you to repeat those points again to your neighbor. This first one is what? You have a what? You have a choice. You have a choice. And what did you say next? You do what? There are what? How many options? Two options. And there's what? There's no middle ground. So what? How long will you continue to wait? Do what? Choose a side. That's just the complete message. Choose a side. How long will you continue to wait? Can we just bow our heads together today? And... Please don't just take this thing and say, oh, the preaching was okay. I think I understood it. That's not about it. Can you make a decision today? And I'll call maybe one or two categories of people. I want daddy to pray for us. If you are here, see, there's no shame to this thing. There's, no, there's no, nothing to be ashamed of. And you know, you have never made a decision to give your life to Christ. That's the side you, you need to choose today. I am your own. Till the day you will come, Jesus, I am your own. Is there anybody in that situation that you just want to make a decision and say, Jesus, I'm giving you my life? There's no shame to it. You have never decided to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life. When the choir was singing this morning, and you were saying, He has made me, I have a new life. If it's you, don't be ashamed. Just raise up your hand. Just raise up your hand. You know you want to make that decision this morning. You want to follow Jesus. You want to make him the Lord of your life. The second category of people, and I think it applies to almost all of us, you want the grace of God to hold you. 
you know that this thing is a daily journey. You want to say, I want to keep choosing Jesus. I want to surrender my whole life to him. I want to follow him. Can we just rise up wherever you are? This daddy will pray for us. I'm rising along with you as well. That Jesus, I want to follow you with my life. I know that I'm struggling. See, I have decided to follow you. I have sang this song. I have come out for water, but it is difficult for me. And you want to say, Jesus, help me. Give me grace. Give me strength. Give me a new heart. If you are in that category, please just rise up. There's no shame to it. Don't wait for anybody. I'm rising up already. So if you want to join me. And you want to say, Lord, give me strength. I'm choosing you. That song says, Motifi. You are ready to follow Jesus. He wants grace to hold on to him. Grace to serve him. Grace to choose a side. Grace to hold on to him. I'm asking for that grace too. So if you are here, just, just rise up as that you will pray for us. And say, Lord, I'm choosing you. I'm seeking for help. I'm seeking for strength. we ask the Lord Jesus for you if you are making that choice and you are making that decision you just tell the Lord Jesus this is my decision just help me today I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided Jesus to cleanse them from all sins. Deliver them from every yoke of sin in the name of Jesus. Everyone clinging to you, holding to you, trusting you for grace to break free from every form of addiction. My God and my Father, receive them to your side. 
Help them to break free from every lifestyle that is holding them hostage in the name of Jesus. Break every yoke of addiction in our lives and homes in the name of Jesus. For those who desire to walk with you, to follow you, to run after you, to become your disciples, Father, we ask that you will accept them. You will enlist them among your disciples and you will help them to walk daily with you henceforth in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. The Lord will praise God. We'd like to appreciate God for this beautiful time in God's presence. Trusting God that this week, we will go in the strength of that word. As we get to junctions of choosing, of choosing and of choices, the Lord will help you to make the right choice in the name of Jesus. The Lord will help us to make the right choice in the name of Jesus. We'd like to appreciate our brother who brought the word to us today. We we'll pray the Lord will continue to strengthen him and it will make him an instrument in his hands in Jesus' name. We are so delighted to have our father and brother, Dr. Okori, in, in our presence. So he will come, he will greet us, and then he will close the service with prayer and benediction. Let's put our hands together for God's servant. And after the benediction, we will take the closing hymn. As he comes forward after the benediction of first-timers, either you came last Sunday in the second service, Come over, come over, sir. Or you came this morning, first time as please come to this door. We'll be standing there to shake us with you. God bless you, sir. Um, praise the Lord. Let's do it in the African way, Abby. I want to say a very big thank you. Uh, he has been very modest. In, in talking about us, I want to say a very big thank you to my brother. I, I have known him for years, almost. We were together when we came for MDiv, and um, the Lord has led him since then. We have parted ways. And we'll come back again briefly. And so I want to say thank you, sir. Thank you for the honor and privilege. And I want to say thank you to you. You see, whenever people like this come to the seminary, I, I think I'm speaking on behalf of the seminary, we, we realize that we cannot 